In this video, I'm going to show how to take a homework assignment and develop a solution. Uh, specifically, I'm going to look at the uh, homework where we had to scale a amount of data. So this is the assignment here. I'm just going to take this text and copy that into a new notebook so that I can refer back to what the requirements were later. All right, so this is the set of requirements, and I'm going to create a, another cell. Let's format that a little bit here. All right, so it wants us to create a CSV containing 10 columns of text data, and we have to have a certain amount of characters in the file, or in each entry. And then we want to create files of a certain size. All right, so I think I'm probably going to want to import pandas. And we'll need something to time how long it takes to do certain things. So I'm going to import time. And then I want to create some random entries. So I think of the, the library Faker is pretty helpful. All right, now I don't remember how to use Faker, so I'm going to have to look it up. So I'm just going to look up, see which one of these sites might have some quick uh, code that I can borrow. All right, so I've already imported Faker, and let's, let's try this a little bit here. All right, so that's good. That means that we can use that as one of the entries. And See, I think that's all we're going to be able to get off this page. As far as something useful. Maybe an address. Birthday. So let's see if that works. So I use the tab expansion to get back um, the options. So I'm going to throw in ASCII email. That'll do something nice. All right, so we can use that. Again, Maybe let's try a uh, city. All right. A company, that's always a good thing to have in your data. Country. I'm just going through and looking up a bunch of different sort of reasonable fields that I think would be interesting to have in my CSV. Day, month. Domain name, sure. All right, so how are we doing here? Let's see if we can create a CSV. First, we'll create a pandas file, and then we'll create a CSV from that pandas file. So I'm going to make a... a in a dictionary here. So let's go with fake name. And then my, oop, that should be a, a string as the key here. Date. So first we have to declare that dictionary. All right, so we've got a dictionary. Let's see if we can fill it up with 10 entries.
All right, so we're starting to build up uh, additional entries, and we're aiming for 10, so so far we've got five. So we've got domain name, month, date, country, and company. By the way, I've built up enough work here where I think I'm going to save this and we'll call it uh, scaling of file size. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we've got country, uh, company, city, ASCII email, I think that's everything that we had up here so far, city. else? Bank country? I don't know what that is for Trino. Alright, looking good. So we've got a bunch of data and now we're going to want to call that um, and create multiple rows in a data frame. But first I have to look up how to add that into a dictionary, or how to add that dictionary into a data frame. PD is a pretty standard abbreviation for calling the pandas library, but I usually just use the word pandas to be very explicit. Here we'll notice that we're looping over um, five rows, but I'm only using the same row over and over. So because I want actually random data, I'm going to have to create a different um, dictionary every time. So let's, let's put this in a function. that we can call when we're making that data frame. So I'm going to create a row of data and then return that. So let's try that out. We'll call uh, let's see, right there. There we go. So we're returning that function, or returning that uh, dictionary. And then I'm going to reuse this snippet here. So I'm going to create a fresh data frame. And then for every entry we'll create the row. Good. So now we've got a data frame with five rows, each row being distinct, and uh, so now we can throw that into a CSV. need a demo here so I can see what it, the syntax is actually. In. That's my goal of what I'm doing the search for. So data frame.2 CSV. 
Should be easy enough. Yep. All right. So now the question is, how big is that file on disk? So I'm going to look that up. So this is uh, looking for the file size. I'm going to just see what they've got here. OS git size, OS stat. So I think I'll go with this one here. the size in bytes. Let's take a look at what that looks like in our Jupyter browser. So here I've got file name.csv and it's 636 bytes. So the 636 is not what I was looking for. The assignment um, here is looking at 0.1 megabytes. So 0.1 megabytes in kilobytes, that's 100 kilobytes is what we're looking for. And what we have is 636 bytes. So we need to get the number of rows appropriately si um, ro appropriate to a 100 kilobyte file. So I'm going to increase this to, say, 1,000. Let's see how big that is on disk. That takes a bit longer to generate. So we'll wait for that to, to go through. So now we've got that big data frame output. I'm going to stop displaying the output so I can make this a little bit easier. I mean, I do trust there's a thousand rows there. And I'm going to write that to disk, that data frame. And then how big is that? All right, so to convert uh, bytes to megabytes, that's, that's what we want to convert. It's a factor of a million megabyte, right? Mega million. All right, so really what I want to do is return this divided by one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm at 122 uh, kilobytes for the file size. So slightly over what I wanted to get. I'm going to back this down to say 800 rows. And then we'll see how big that is. So you'll notice this is taking quite a bit of time. I'm going to insert a timer here. So we'll say start equals time dot time. And then here, uh, print time dot time minus start. So 800 rows was pretty close. We'll maybe make that uh, 850. See how long that takes to run and what the file size that is. So what we're timing here is how long it takes to create the data frame, because let's make that clear that it's in seconds. But what we really want to time is how long it takes to time uh, the writing up from memory to disk. And so we're going to do another one of these uh, timing functions here. So that took about eight seconds to create 800 rows of a data frame in memory. That's what this is. And then when I wrote that memory to disk, it took 0 0.059 seconds, which is a lot shorter. And then the file size on disk is 100 kilobytes. So this is, this is a great start. We've got a timer of writing to disk, and we've got uh, the appropriate file size. So now we can sort of figure out to accomplish the requirements of the assignment, we're going to want to increase the row count to get these specific file sizes. All right, so here the 850 rows created uh, a, one, a 0.1 megabyte file, so we can sort of guess that it will take 
um, about 8,500 rows to get a, a file of uh, one megabyte. But if we're, so the consequence there is that the waiting for 70 seconds, so if I increase this by a factor of 10, to get this up by the file size up by a factor of 10, let's just print that. All right, so I wanna increase this by a factor of 10 to get my next, to my next file size, but I know I'm gonna be going up to 500 megabytes. So I wanna take a quick estimate here. 850 lines of, pipe of Panda's data frame took seven seconds to generate. So mathematically, if we multiply this by a factor of 10, because we want this to increase by a factor of 10, then the expected time, if it increases linearly, will be about 72 seconds. So a minute for generating a one megabyte file isn't that bad, but that's concerning when I know that I'm gonna to have to get to 500 megabytes. So if a one megabyte file takes 70 seconds, then a 500 megabyte file, let's see how long it takes, so 70 seconds. Oops, misspelled that. So if, if I just linearly extrapolate out from the single data point that I have, it would take me 9.7 hours, so about 10 hours, to create a data frame in memory that will write to disk and be 500 megabytes. So I'm pretty lazy, I don't wanna do that. So my lazy tactic is that I'm going to just simply um, repeat, I'm gonna take this data frame and repeat it until I get uh, the appropriately sized uh, output because there's nothing in the requirement here that says that all the data has to be random. It just says it wants 10 columns of text data. So we could be super lazy and just have all the, the rows be a fixed length, but I'm gonna be a little adventurous here and try and have just a duplication of this initial set. So I've got this, this 850 rows. Let's see if I can figure out how to add in uh, multiple copies of that into a single data frame. Now we can go back and just validate. This really is, file on disk is 104 kilobytes. All right. So the interesting little side note here, even though creating the file in memory took a long time, writing the file from memory to disk did not take very long. And the reason this took a long time is because this function right here that we wrote makes a bunch of calls to the fake library, right? That faker that's making some random permutations, that's what is very expensive, all those calls to that, that library. All right, so let's see if we can get the, the time for a pan, uh, let's see if we can create a data frame that is multiple copies of this first one and create a one megabyte data frame. So I've got a, a copy of the original data frame called DF2. I'm gonna merge that back into the original one. What we really probably want to do is either concat. That's probably a more correct use. Let's see. P 
pd.pandas.concat. So the original data frame had 850 rows. The new data frame has 1,700, so that's good. So now let's see, just as a check, how long that takes, or how, what that file size on disk is. So I'm going to copy this code again, and we'll write that to disk, and then how big is that? All right, so as expected, the data frame that has twice as many rows is twice as big. So now we're going to have to find a way to uh, make a file that's 10 times as big. So what I'm going to do is do this operation repeatedly. So I have to remember every time here it's doubling, so it's not exactly the factor of 10 increase we were looking for, but we can just see where this gets us, and then we'll have to break it down. So we had a file back here that was 0.1 megabytes. So that's the first size that we're looking for. And then we jumped to 6.6 uh, .6 megabytes. So that was a bit too much of a jump. So I'm going to have to reset. Rather than do five runs, we'll just try what three runs does. All right. So now we're now we're at a space where we're we're pretty close to one megabyte, we'll call it a, a deal. And so I'm going to have to keep incrementing the size of that data frame to hit one megabyte and uh, then let's see.
All right, so we're going to create the, the first data frame, and then we will append that multiple times. Yeah, I think that'll be a little bit more effective than doubling every time. So this is setting the size in megabytes. Now we can just jump that and let's time this whole thing. Perfect. Okay, so when range is equal to 10, that gets us a one megabyte file. All right. So that's convenient. And it takes uh, only six seconds to do that generation of a one megabyte file. So that's good because previously we were worried that a 500 megabyte would take uh, a 500 megabyte file would take let's see nine nine point seven hours to generate, and now I think we'll be able to let's see if we can create just as a test. Let's create a let's see if 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 a ten iteration loop creates a one megabyte file, then a, one, a range of 100 would yield a 10 megabyte file. And we can do that 1,000 will take, and then let's just see how long that takes. So this is massively in it. So the inefficiency here is the in the calls to a random function. The reason this is inefficient is because we're creating a duplication of the data frame and then using concat to append it every time to add additional rows. And so this is a relatively inefficient way of getting a large data frame. But in the end, let's see, I get to print this. So it only took us 13 seconds to generate a 500 megabyte file. That makes me happy because it didn't take nine and a half hours. Now it's, so it completed the operation where it is generating the large data frame and now it's taking time to write that to disk. So it took 76 seconds to write a 517 megabyte file. So that, that means that we will be able to do this scaling test relatively quickly. Since we want to go over a range of file sizes, then my approach will be to put this in this operation of creating a data frame, I'm going to put that in a function so that I can call it and specify how big I want the, the data frame to be. So I'm going to copy that text, put this in a function,
from this function, I'm going to get back the data frame of my desired size. So if I want to put it in, and I'll put the size in megabytes here. What I really need to do is place that variable here and see, multiply that times 10. All right, so now we'll be able to uh, create an, a, a data frame of arbitrary size using this function. All right, that's my function, and now I want to use that list of function of file sizes here. The other thing that we wanted to do is not just create the function, but write it to disk. So we're going to put that in. So this will get us back a data frame that we want to write to disk. And then we're going to use our timing function here to write that to disk and then get the file size. And then rather than print the record, I'm going to just save that to a uh, dictionary. To monitor progress, I'm going to throw in uh, another display of how long this is taking. I'll give it a shot. And we got an error. Not super surprising. Four file size, list of file sizes. Yep, I need to recompile that. All right, so it's going to go off. It's going to create the data frame of the appropriate size. Oh, ran into a problem. Float object. Not quite sure what it's complaining about. We'll try to cast this to an int and see if that helps. All right, so this is creating a one for 
So it took 0.429 seconds to create a data frame of one megabyte in size. And then it uh, wrote that to disk and then timed how long the, the operation of writing it to disk took and then displayed that back. Yeah, so the, so the reason, so what we're getting, it might be a little confusing, but the time that this is printing is for the time since the last loop iteration. And so on the first iteration, it's counting both how long it took to create the data frame, as well as the actual write to, op, write to disk operation. And so when we look at our dictionary, where we look at results time dict, that will actually be uh, only measuring the amount of time it took to write the the data frame to disk. All right. So as a while I'm waiting here, I'm just gonna throw in the results time dict. That's the one that we want to plot eventually. And then if if we know what that is, we're gonna import matplotlib All right, I have a dictionary that two the key and the values are the x and y values respectively, so I'm going to uh, try to figure out how to plot that efficiently. All right, coming back to our, our, our notebook, it took a total of 90 seconds to get to that 500 megabyte file output. And here are the timings. Mm, looks like I screwed up. Back when I was doing this, yeah, I'm a little confused. So, back when I had an 850 row data frame, it took seven seconds to create that data frame and only 0 0.057 seconds to to write that to disk. So, and that was a 0 0.1 megabyte file. So now that I see that I'm creating a 0.1 megabyte file and it's taking 0.42 seconds, it's quite a while. It's throwing me off here. Also, another issue is that it took less time to write a larger file. So that's also a bad indicator. Something's, something's off for that first value there. Right, and we'll, we'll definitely see that when we plot it. Just throw these in directly. All right. So the the we want to have an input is the x value. So that's the key, and the output is the time. That's the y value. Let's see if that's what we get here. I'm gonna write the output to a null so that it doesn't display anything. So that's 
that's sort of the linear curve, the linear sort of shape that I was looking, that I was expecting. Let's throw in some axes. Would be the right time. All right, so that's that's basically the plot that we're looking for. As to why this value is so high for one megabyte, I'm just curious to see if maybe that goes away if we average over three runs of this. So let's take all of this. Uh, let's see. Rather than maybe sort of that. Instead of the desired, this is the desired file size. And I'll have to rewrite that. So, I'm going to use the, the size on disk, we'll call that the actual file size. And we'll store that to disk. So I'm going to take this, this code that I wrote and we'll try it three different times. A range of three. So I want to do three runs of this. So we create a data frame of that right size, and then we start the timer, we write to disk, we measure the elapsed time. I'm going to store my elapsed time and file size to a list, and then we will store the averaged value of that.
So rather than, let's see, the average file size is that. And this is the average rundown. Right time. And we'll store that to a dictionary. Alright, so we're going to do three trial runs over multiple file sizes and we'll see if this problem is alleviated. Not surprisingly, I have an error. Number of trials not defined because I forgot to execute this cell. All right, that's going to go through, and I think last time it took about a minute and a half, so this time it'll take four and a half minutes to run that uh, measurement. Meanwhile, we'll get started. So then the results will come out here, and then we're going to move this all the way to the top since we've already imported. Once we get the results, we'll plot it. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for reading. So how can we be clever? So we've written that to disk. What I like to do is just make sure that my, my read experiments are separate from my write experiments. Oh, here we are. Oop. I it for 500 megabytes. There we go. Desired. That's what happens when you don't restart the kernel is that it remembers that old value. So I'm going to be super safe here and we're going to restart the entire kernel. So kernel restart and run all. This will just wipe all the variables and um, start fresh, which makes me feel a lot more confident that this notebook runs in order. Uh, so okay, so there the, the kernel restarted. We get back that every th every cell has a star by it. it, means it's waiting to execute. So it's basically just going from the top, linearly through all the cells, and evaluating each cell. So this means we have to rerun some things that previously ran. But the benefit is we know for certain that none of the variables uh, are from previous runs. All right. So, so we come back down here. Eventually, it'll come back down to the, the cell where we where we were originally, and start running that. But that'll take a little bit of time. So in the meantime, I'm, I'm going to work on the the read uh, from disk. And we can start go back and do some documentation. All right. So here we have uh, this is Got that, and then let's say the the real testing is putting up here.
down so All right, so now now we're looking very reasonably 0 0.03 seconds for 0.1 megabyte file and now currently it finished the 10 megabyte file to disk and so I think what's up next we'll do 10 100 and 500 so that'll take a little bit of time on the, the read test. I'm going to take that block of code that I wrote previously for the write test and we're just going to throw in a few extra lines to do the, the read scaling. write a file to disk and then just for safety we'll, we'll make an, an, an intermediary file so that it's not conflicting with the original write operation.
All right, so now that we've duplicated most of the variables, I'm going to review what I did here. We've got start the writing test, so it's going to start a timer. It's going to write the data frame to CSV, and then the elapsed time for that write operation will be recorded. And then we'll get the actual file size, and then we'll store that to a list with write and write. We're going to flush some data through the cache, and then we'll do a read test of that same file that was created earlier with the timer surrounding that operation. And then we're going to get the file size for that, and then store those values to a list with read and read in parallel. After that is done for three times, then we will store everything to the average write and uh, average read variables. So that's write and write and read and read. And then we'll calculate a, and we'll create a dictionary with the values of average read and average, oops, there we go, fun of mistake. Average write file size, and yeah, read, okay. Perfect. So here, while I was writing that, my previous code block ran, and I got a bunch of results. So here's the file size in megabytes, and here's the time it took to write that to disk on average. that ran. And then we're basically going to do the exact same thing for, for the, so this was actually just for the write test. And then there we go. So that'll take a while to run to do the reads and writes. And then we're going to plot the results. Oops, here we run into a problem. File result list write time, not defined. That's right.
All right, so we got some results. Took a little bit longer than I wanted, but we got back that the read from disk is much faster than the, the write to disk operation.